Hi, welcome back to Post TV, live from NAB 2013. I'm Randy Altman, editor of Post Magazine, and I'm here with frequent blogger and storage expert Tom Coughlin, who is uh, roaming around the show, but also he's uh, in June he's doing a creative storage conference that you guys, he's going to tell us a little bit about that, and then he's going to dig in a bit about what he's seen at the show in terms of storage. Thank you, Randy. Yes, so the uh, creative storage conference is June 25th, 2013. It's in Culver City, California. It's a one-day event that focuses on digital storage in every aspect of media and entertainment, from uh, uh, content capture through post-production, content delivery, and then archiving and preservation. Do you have your guests, any guests booked yet? Anyone that you could uh, give a shout out? Um, we've got, well, we're still working. Oh, we're so still, you're putting yeah, it together we're now. We're putting it together now. We're, in fact, um, if there's people out there who do storage stuff or end users got an interesting story, our, we've extended our deadline for submissions to April 19th. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good one. So you've been here since the beginning of the show, and you've, I've, se I've seen you at many storage booths. Yep. Can you tell me what you've seen and maybe talk about some trends? Oh, there's some very fascinating things going on. There's uh, changes in the types of storage devices that people are using. There's uh, um, a lot more stuff where people are trying to do things through the internet, you know, do cloud storage, things like that. Okay. And just the, the, the increasing complexity and size of multimedia objects that people are creating nowadays is really changing the whole infrastructure of storage uh, and, the, and the networking too, of course, uh, in the post-production process as well. Now, can you talk a little bit about cloud storage? Or I know at first people were a little concerned about the just the privacy issues of it all. Has mm -hmm. that sort of uh, waned a bit? Well, it sure seems like there's a lot of people that are that have offerings in this space, and like there is some, you know, there is some take up on it. I think, you know, peop, the the providers are starting to address those issues. For instance, you can encrypt data, right? You know, okay. try to protect it. Yeah. Um, uh, also, you know, there's concepts rather than putting, you know, you put on a, a more public cloud, or you can have it be a hybrid system, where you've got your the content essentially that is accessible through the internet, but you own it. So gotcha. you have more, you know, more personal control over it in that sense. Right. Okay. But Fantastic. there's still issues. There's still, you know, a lot of things got to be worked out on it. But what it enables you to do is to um, take advantage of the enormous uh, increases in storage capacity and availability that you can get with these new architectures that are going into these. Uh, cloud-based systems, these object-based storage systems that people are using in clouds. Okay. Um, well, I'm also going to ask you to actually mention some specific products, but mm -hmm. also you can't go anywhere here at NAB without hearing 4K. Can you talk a bit about how storage companies are addressing that? Yes, yes. So storage companies are uh, having to increase the, uh, the storage capacities they've got on almost every aspect of the workflows. It's also the types of devices that might be used uh, for that are changing as well. Um, it also is a change in the whole networking architecture that people have. You have to have faster throughput, you've got to have uh, uh, still maintain acceptable latencies, okay. and you've got to have more storage capacity for, the, for this greater resolution and also greater frame rate content that many people are running into. You know, modern cameras, professional video cameras, run up to 120 frames per second. So if you do 4K at 120 frames per second, it adds up. Yeah, absolutely. Not that many people are doing that yet, but you know, well, I know that um, there. Facilis was <laughs> the press event last yes, night that last Facilis night had. They event. talked a little bit. Yeah. Um, so have you gotten a chance to, to check out what what their products are and um, anything that we should know about about well, them or any? Well, they're obviously you know they're they're creating a new a whole new line. They and some other vendors too have made announcements. So whole new lines of products that are addressing the needs of the of that uh, the mid market post production folks. You know mm -hmm. the uh, uh, you know reasonable size facilities. Uh, and what they what they might need in terms of the storage, networking, and other architectures to be able to deal with it with that higher resolution content, those larger file sizes. Right. And you know, it's, it's a question of metadata. You know, the information about the content you've got. It's a question of the size of these objects. And the other thing, of course, in video production in general, is that since it's gone video, people take a lot more stuff than they used to take. That's right. Yeah. You could just keep rolling. And yeah. And now it's bigger. Yeah. It's maybe higher frame rate and you got more of it. So, you know, just managing the, all that content and the software layer in addition to the, to the hardware just becomes ever more important in that. That's true. Um, I was also going to ask you a bit about um, Thunderbolt. Yes. How has that progressed? Thunderbolt is very, very interesting. So we saw, we've uh, seen the, over the last, uh, last year, you know, basically, and last year and a half, basically, we've seen uh, Thunderbolt products. There at this year, Intel announced that uh, there's going to be a, ne a new version of Thunderbolt that's going to be coming out by next year, which will go from 10 uh, gigabit per second per channel to 20 gigabit per second per channel, still using copper. Really? Yes, and they also are showing optical fiber extenders, you know, for 
you know, because you're going to be, you know, you're limited on copper how far you can go, but if you want to have a longer, a longer string, you go to optical fiber. And if they go above 20 gigabit per second, whatever the generation is beyond that, then mm -hmm. they will also be uh, probably having to go to, cop to optical fibers as well because you, you, know, you run out, start running out of gas and what you can do with copper. Right. So, yeah. and there's a, every, a lot of vendors here showing products, especially storage products with Thunderbolt. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. more than, Everybody. I, mean, I think it's doubled from last year, actually. I, at, yes, at least, yeah, at least at doubled. At least, right. It's like all, these, all the guys making these storage boxes are using Thunderbolt, it seems. Yeah, it's because the users want it, so there's really, there's no option. Especially they have to this give market. It to them. It's yeah. a bit more expensive for a general consumer market, for a mar but for a market that really will pay, you know, appreciates that kind of, uh, that kind of data rates, it really has, uh, you know, it's been very attractive to people. Uh, one last topic I'll ask you about is um, LTO and archival storage. Ah, yes. Can yes. you get a bit into that? Into Fascinating that? stuff going on there. You know, so putting file systems into the store, into this, into tape storage media, has enabled uh, whole new types of storage systems to be created. And there's a number of companies that are here that are that are showing LTO-based products. Um, some very interesting ones. Uh, they initially announced it last year, but Fuji Film, which actually manufactures the tapes, was uh, has this uh, Permi Vault. Uh, thing, vault. which actually is a cloud-based uh, tape storage system that they're offering. Okay. So it's a way of for people to do, uh, uh, you know, to do, it's, it's stored in tape, it's in the cloud, but apparently the individual uh, parties, it's tapes that are dedicated to them that are in this cloud. So it's, it's, I see it as sort of an out outsourcing approach for archiving. Right. Uh, but there also is a, a lot of other things that are going on in terms of uh, uh, using LTO uh, as an attractive archiving system. Right, so it's LTO 6 now, right? Is LTO the 6 is the newest generation, yeah. but, it's, okay. but it's a continuation of LTO 5 in terms of that LTFS file system. Right. But okay. it has higher capacities, higher data rates possible on it. Okay. Another odd thing too, just while we're in the archiving thing, is there's a bunch of optical guys out there that are showing these uh, these new uh, optical archive products. Really? Can you yeah. name Can you name a couple in case yeah, anybody yeah. wants to check them? Yeah. So Sony has this 12 disc uh, cartridge optical system, Blu-ray optical system. Panasonic also has a 12 disc system they're showing, hmm. and there's some other people scattered throughout here that are doing the optical archiving too. And some people will actually want to have. I was talking to one guy today. They want to have both the tape and the optical because they want to have redundancies of technologies, not just locations, for archive content, for instance. Interesting. Yes. Well. Thank you, Tom. We're going to have to thank um, you, Randy. sign off for the moment, but thanks for, for coming and sharing your information. And Storage Conference, again, you want to just give it a it's quick It's the plug? Creative Storage Conference, and if you're interested in this, go to creativestorage.org. Okay, thanks so much. We'll be back very shortly with our next guest.